friends welcome back to we talk mental health's youtube channel my name is karen as always your friendly neighborhood licensed clinical social worker bringing you the facts and today we're going to talk about child and adolescent and teen mental health kind of all wrapped up into one because there's a large stigma associated with those age ranges and whether or not kiddos can actually experience and live with mental health problems and mental illnesses. And I'm here today to tell you that they can. So I have worked in an elementary school. I've worked in a middle school. I've worked in a high school. I've worked with families, with their kiddos. And mental health problems are not taken seriously or as seriously as they should be with kiddos. When I say kiddos, I mean young children, adolescents, teenagers. I'm just going to kind of wrap it up into one. A kiddo can develop mental health issues and they go untreated for a long time. You know, they don't learn coping skills, uh, resiliency, um, and it ends up becoming a chronic illness that they deal with as adults. You know, hopefully when they're old enough to make their own decisions, they seek treatment, but if it's a stigmatized notion in their household growing up, they're not going to take it seriously, you know, if their parents are, and I'm not saying that this happens in every household, but if a, if a kiddo's growing up with a parent who doesn't believe that mental health problems are real, then that kiddo is not going to believe that, that mental health problems are real, and they're going to have a biased opinion on what's going on with their mental health, and they might not seek treatment. And I think that it kind of goes full circle. I believe wholeheartedly that kiddos experiencing mental health issues, not getting treatment, developing chronic mental health issues as they grow older leads to part of the reason why suicide rates are so high. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. So I wanted to talk about some myths today. And the first one that we are going to talk about is that if a child has mental health issues that it's the parents fault and that's not true at all. There are a lot of reasons why a child can develop a mental health problem or a mental illness and could be hereditary, it could be biological, it could be because of trauma that has nothing to do with the with the parent. So saying that it's their fault is probably a normal shame blaming induced response to something like that but it's not. It's not the parents fault. It's not something that they did or didn't do when raising the child. It, many psychiatric problems have a direct biological cause and are no way related to how a child is parented. The second method I wanted to talk about is ADHD is just an excuse for bad behavior and inadequate parenting. This is my favorite one because lots of kids nowadays are diagnosed with ADHD and sometimes the behaviors are normal and you know age appropriate and sometimes you know it could be a behavior that needs intervention and perhaps medication and I have said it before and I'll say it again I don't push meds I don't believe in pushing meds I believe that there are other ways to handle situations and and learn how to cope with such things but sometimes it is needed sometimes it can be helpful so ADHD is kind of one of those things that has become more widely diagnosed within the last couple of years and it's, it's a psychiatric illness with described characteristics of symptoms and proven treatments that work. And it's, it's not the kiddo trying to get more attention. It's, it's something that's, you know, it's, a, it's an imbalance in the brain in one way or another that needs treatment. And it's not because a parent can't adequately parent their child. So the third myth is the biggest one, I think, is that it's just a phase and the and the child will grow out of it. I think this happens a lot with teens. Adolescents and teenage years and high school and middle school are so hard and they're so much different than they were when I was in middle school and high school. And kids are mean. Kids are a lot meaner nowadays than they were when I was growing up. And I've seen that firsthand and sometimes it kind of astounds me. Like when I was working in a middle school and was talking to some of my clients and it's out outrageous some of the things that were happening. The bullying is incredibly under dealt with and it's something that truly truly impacts still 
growing and still learning and still developing mind of an adolescent and a teenager and it changes them you know it can have serious effects on their on their brain and the way that it develops so it's not just a phase you know and if there is bullying if there's other sorts of trauma other types of hardships that they're going through it's going to create changes within their mental state and it's something that needs to be taken seriously all of the time they need to feel like they can be open with with their parents or if not a parent a guardian or or a teacher or a guidance counselor or a social worker because when they don't feel like they're taken seriously they feel worthless they feel hopeless those things lead to suicidal ideation some people experience a mental illness at one point in their lives and never again sometimes it can be an ongoing periodic or chronic illness as as their brains develop but it happens to anybody it can happen to literally any person at any age and kids are far more resilient and they can kind of bounce back a lot quicker but it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't need help sometimes another myth I think that will that we're gonna talk about is that people who are young don't kill themselves they don't end their lives by suicide that is a huge myth and I think that it's one that's becoming more widely talked about because suicide prevention and education is becoming much more pronounced within our society but it's still I think we have a long way to go if you don't know I'm a crisis clinician in an emergency room so I do mental health and safety assessments on kiddos on teens on young adults on elderly you name it I've done it and I've seen somebody as young as five years old come in with serious mental health problems and there's real suicidal ideation so to say that people that young don't kill themselves is false my cousin sent me a link um, from an article the other day about a 12 year old in his neighborhood that ended their life by suicide because of bullying a 12 year old I think a couple of years ago there was an eight-year-old you know we're astounded when we see these types of articles in the media but we don't we're still not taking it as seriously as it needs to be so I wanted to kind of segue into some statistics about youth in in the United States and these stats are from NAMI again the link is in the description box so if you wanted to check out their website to get more information please feel free 20 percent of youth ages 13 to 18 live with a mental health condition that's a lot and what's even more astounding is that the average delay between onset of symptoms of a mental illness and intervention is eight to ten years so that means that a person a youth between the ages of 13 and 18 starts developing symptoms of a mental illness and they don't get treatment for eight to ten years there are a lot of reasons why that could be. It could be financial, it could be geographically an issue, it could be the the mental health centers have extreme wait lists, which is true. Or it could be because the parents don't take it as seriously. And I am not trying to place blame. I am a parent. I've talked to parents who oftentimes have no idea that their kiddo is going through something until they're in an emergency room and they're being assessed for suicidal ideation and they've been self-harming for months and they have no idea so it's not a parenting flaw eight to ten years is a really long time to live with a mental illness when it could be treated not getting the treatment that they need 50% of all lifetime cases of mental illness begin by age 14 and 75% begin by the age of 24 so to say that it's non-existent and that mental health problems don't exist in the youth of the United States is hugely false immensely false and this is why I'm doing this video also because suicide is the third leading cause of death for youth ages 10 to 24 it's real it's a problem and we need to take it more seriously by getting these kiddos help when they truly need it and and not brushing it off 90 percent of those who died by suicide had an underlying mental illness we need to do more in terms of advocacy and we need to do more in terms of education and promoting acceptance and that mental health issues and mental illnesses don't 
make you weak you know you're not weak because you live with a mental illness you're not weak because you have bad mental health days you're a person you're a human being who is learning and adapting to circumstances within your life that challenge your mental state and that is a normal human response so when i was growing up mental health wasn't really ever talked about i cannot remember a time when depression was discussed or anxiety was discussed or or trauma and the impacts of trauma on a young growing developing brain were discussed those things never happened so for me you know i knew that that a couple of friends of mine were going to see the school social worker i knew that that was a thing but i didn't really understand why to be honest with you but i didn't feel like i needed help because you know i wasn't going through nearly as much as they were going through and you know my life wasn't as hard as theirs was so i just thought that it was me i just thought that it was my inability to kind of handle what was going on and, and i knew that the self-harm that i was doing was something that wasn't okay and it was probably not the best way to be handling it it was never talked about i had no idea that I wasn't the only person that was going through and living with depression. It's so important for us now to have these conversations with youth and I fully, fully support, 100% support the idea that mental health and mental illness should be talked about in schools. And I think that we need to start having legitimate classes where we're teaching youth how to identify signs of mental illness, how to develop coping skills, what a coping skill is, what what it means to be resilient, what it means to to seek help and that it's okay to seek help. It's super important. It's very I'm very passionate about it. I love what I'm doing, but I think that, you know, one day I would like to do more to advocate for getting mental health education in the schools. But if you have any questions, as always, please don't hesitate to reach out. All of my social media handles, including We Talk Mental Health, is in the description box. And if you would like to see any other videos, please let me know. I put out new videos every Friday, so please make sure you subscribe. And I think that you're all wonderful. I think that you're all incredibly strong. And if you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or to somebody else, because somebody's always going to be willing to listen. I love you and have a great week.